From TimCast.com, Rumble acquires locals in a bid to expand creator economy. The company wants to foster high quality content by giving creators control of their content and data. Very interesting move. For those that don't know, Rumble is a very popular video player. It's alternative to YouTube, essentially. It's got a lot of independent and, and conservative voices on it. And it's considered kind of like an alternative to YouTube. There have been many. Rumble seems to be doing really well and seems to have large coffers, as it were. And Locals is basically Dave Rubin's answer to Patreon. So now Rumble has acquired Locals. I don't know what this will mean for the people of Locals who have their accounts there. But wow, this, uh, uh, this is a fast move. We have a quote, actually. Quote, we felt there was an opportunity to fairly serve everyone by providing the same tools large creators have without preferencing, Rumble told Timcast via email, based on the premise that small creators like friends and family were no longer being prioritized on platforms like YouTube. Privately owned Rumble launched in 2013. The company's creators felt large platforms focus on multi-channel networks, large corporations, and brands. Unlike other platforms, creators using locals own not only their own content, but also the community data. The data can be analyzed to better understand and engage with the creator audience. With more insight into who they are reaching, creators can expand their work and continue to generate revenue without outside influence. Instead, they'll use subscription model Locals has built. This is particularly interesting. Ian, what do you think about this? I think the the consolidation of corporate power is often done with good intentions. Dave Rubin sold you out. He got a bunch of big, big popular people in there with and by using his personal brand and his trust. And then he sold you out. He made, I don't know, they haven't released how much money he got paid to sell you out, but he is a... Well, what do you mean by sell them? I mean that he just got paid a lot of money and got an offer he couldn't refuse to give now control of all, all these people trusted Dave. They trusted you. Right. And now, now they have no choice but to be owned. Their data is now owned by Rumble. Mm-hmm. This is what Google bought YouTube. I remember that happening in 2008. Well, so th- they say specifically that uh, you own your community data. That's what they say. I don't know anything think, about this deal, to be honest. I, I think the bigger issue I have with, um, look, I, th- I think, you know, I tweeted out congrats to him for, for pulling it off. I think it's fantastic. I think there's uh, there's some crit- crit- critiques we can have. I think it's good that the independent uh, tech environment is growing larger and more powerful. And ultimately, this will be good because there needs to be market competition against YouTube and Patreon and Silicon Valley. This is what we're seeing. However, that being said, I don't like any of how the, the system is operating. And it's not anything personal with Rumble. Uh, we, use, we use Rumble. We, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I, think, I think Locals is fantastic. But the whole time the Patreon fiasco happened, this is, this is basically, you know, Patreon bans Carl Benjamin. They banned Lauren Southern first, and they banned Carl Benjamin. They basically nuked people's income without warning or notice. Right. Overnight, one day, you know, Carl wakes up, his account's deleted. All his money is gone. So what, what, what ends up happening is we see alternatives emerge saying, we're going to create centralized subscription models just like Patreon, but with our own unique version of it. And it's the exact same problem. Michael That's Malice, why I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Michael Malice, Dave sold you out, dude. Mm. I hope that you got paid for this too, Mike. I hope that all the people on Locals got a percentage of this buyout because it's your data that was sold. Oh, Ian. You're getting pissed. This is why we're building decentralized technology where you can own your own data and host your own stuff. I agree. I mean, I've always been skeptical, even of the alternatives, because there have been alternative social media platforms that came and went, sold their viewers, deleted their content, and then just rebranded and started new again. I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. What about my old content that I uploaded there? Like, oh, it's gone. I'm like... You know, there's a lot of, you know, pump and dump uh, cryptocurrencies also out there. There's a lot of bad things. That's why I always prioritized building my own platform, my own email list. That's why I have LukeUncensored.com. You have TimCast.com. And I think this is the way that it's going to go decentralized. And I think if you ever put your hope in a centralized system or somebody else to take care of something for you, I think there's a bigger chance you're always going to be let down. I want to put Substack out of business. I want to put locals out of business. I want to put Patreon out of business. I want to put all of these subscription service services out of business. Now that is just me being kind of hyperbolic, but the point I'm making is, you know, for one, Ian spearheading with, with many other people, the, the on foundations work, which is creating decentralized open source versions of these tools, which means it's not just that you'll own your data. 
you'll own the domain. You'll own the server space. It'll be yours and you can set it up or you can join like a node where someone's got centralized server space and then you can, you know, piggyback on it. The issue I have here is that the solution to the problems we faced, even by someone like Dave Rubin, has been to recreate the same system, which creates the same vulnerabilities and the same problems. Now, I don't know if I would go as far as you to say that they were sold out because I don't know how this negatively impacts someone like Michael Malice. Yeah, me too. I am open to following this. I'm really going to in the next coming weeks because I want to know all the terms of the contract that are going to be as much as possibly publicly available because maybe the people are going to make out like bandits on this as well as Dave. But Dave, I had a lot of faith in you and I gave you the benefit of the doubt. I thought you were going to hold on to locals for the next 20 or 30 years and really do this, at least try and do it right. This is devastating to me. So one thing I think you can consider is, um, and look, look, I know uh, Dave. I know the guys at Rumble. One thing you consider, you, you should consider is that when you sign up for a service like Patreon, Subscribestar, or, uh, uh, or locals, you're locked in, whether intentionally or not. It's not so much that they own the data and they can claim you own the data. It's that if you build up, say, 3,000 paying subscribers on someone else's platform and they're getting a cut of that, you can't leave. They own you forever. Now you can beg your, your, your subscribers and your followers and be like, guys, I'm going to be moving to a new platform. Please subscribe there. But I saw this. I saw what happened with Patreon. When Patreon nuked Carl Benjamin, and all of his pe- all of, a bunch of his fans started quitting and canceling subscriptions and hit everybody. So I went from having, I think we had a few thousand people donating. And then when everyone's like, sorry, Tim, I can't support Patreon. I said, I set up Subscribestar, an alternate platform. You can, sub- you can support me there. And the attrition was massive. People did not move over. So when I saw that, I said, centralizing people's subscriber base Uh, onto someone else's platform will always be negative towards these individuals. And what we need is a decentralized, easy to install package that someone can make their own version. At TimCast.com, the first thing we did was we hired a guy to make a very simple website, cost us a decent amount of money. And then we started posting members only content as if it was any other, you know, private subscription service. The amount of money that we would have spent if we went with any of these platforms, be it Patreon, Locals, Subscribe Store, or otherwise, it was 70% higher. I'll put it that way. When I, saw, when I saw how much they charge people to use their platforms, I was just like, they are extracting value from people. Like and Locals, you, they're taking what, like 8 to 20% of your I don't monthly know if, I don't income? Know. They take some percent of your monthly income, and now that's going to rumble. And if the value of that, them taking a large percent of the income is that the network effect of locals. So if you leave locals, you lose that network effect. One of the things I think, you know, could be considered as well is that uh, Rumble recently hired a bunch of video creators and personalities to make content for them. I wonder who they're going to sell their company to. With the, with the acquisition of locals, theoretically, the integration would undercut any of their creators for making similar, similar deals. And now Google can buy Rumble. And now you're going to make out like a bandit, Chris Pavlo- Pavlovsky. Good job. <laughs> I know, Chris. I don't think this is ultimately a bad thing. I just don't like the idea of centralizing cor- people's incomes yeah, or anything Yeah, corporate like that. consolidation is not inherently bad. It's just super like, dangerous we, for liberty. Right. We use Rumble. I think Rumble's great. Yeah, it's, it's fast. Good. It's cheap. It's effective. It's, there, there's, there's no censorship. My bigger concern is people's income being centralized and then sold around. Right? So, so here's what you got to understand. Uh, and, and again, with all due respect to, to today, I think I said congratulations because I think it's I think you know he did great work and alternative media growing bigger and more powerful is a good thing. My my answer is more like my view of this is you don't want to work for somebody, and it's already bad enough. There's YouTube rules, there's Twitter rules, whatever. Making your own space where you can control it is good, but if the idea of locals was that you would control your own community, but that but that Dave could then sell your community to somebody else, completely undercuts what I guess the 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 the, the story was supposed to be. I don't want someone to be like, "Hey, I'm running a service. If you use it, I guarantee you X." And then I'll say, "Oh, okay, great." Like you said, "Oh, Dave's going to own this forever. I trust him." And then he sells it. And now you don't know who you're answering to. Now you don't know what terms will change. And they could. I don't like the idea that your income, your subscribers, your fans can be sold to someone else. I'm that still waiting. That's crazy. I, I'm still waiting for all the details to come out of this, um, and they should be coming out. If they don't, that's when people should be worried. But let's see exactly what the deal was. Let's see what the contracts are going to be. Let's see how they're going to change. Let's see the terms. It's going to be interesting to see how this went down. I think it's a good thing. 
Look, I'm, I'm not trying to rain on the parade, but I, I, you know, I think being critical is fair because I've been critical of the centralized subscription services from the beginning, in, regardless of who owns it. In a lot of ways, Google buying YouTube was fantastic for creators because they created the partner. Pro they were able to subsidize and create the partner program and start paying people. YouTube wasn't able to do that when it was Chad Hurley. But the downside then is Google's corporate censorship model took over. The fear would be if, you know, Rumble sold, which I don't think it will, though. Well, no one ever thinks it's going to happen. That's true. But it's totally legally allowed to. I did not think locals would sell. I did not. Yeah, yeah to anybody. And then they do. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too worried about this. I, I think ultimately, look, Rumble, I think, is fantastic. And I think them gaining more, uh, more power in this space to help push back against the censorship and the big tech oligarchy, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, I'll just put it this way. I don't, I, I've talked to people about locals and I'm like, I think it's fantastic that Dave was like Patreon sensor, censorious and bad. So we need our own space. And he made it and then other people used it. I just wish people like Michael Malice, for instance, decided to write a check for a grand to just make his own version of it and not give away 10% of his revenue. I just don't understand this. This is what, this is what drives me insane is that Tulsi Gabbard, Michael Malice, you know, who, uh, the other people who are using locals and, and again, no disrespect to locals, but just in terms of these people. You go online, you say web dev, they'll say, we can make you this exact thing for a thousand bucks. We'll have it done in overnight. Finger snap. Now, I just don't get it. But I guess people have said they want the network that it's like you're on this platform. Other people are on it. I just wish people were more freedom oriented, I guess, and, and, and took, the, took the responsibility upon their shoulders and protected their assets and had more control. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm too uh, arrogant. And I refuse to like give up, you know, and, and anything that I'm doing to anybody else for any reason. It's uh, hey, no I one. had I had my subscription service for seven years, <laughs> you right? Know? So I, I believe in that idea as well. Decentralization is the idea that I think we should be promoting, but we could promote it by giving by being examples of it rather than just following the herd and the flock. I just, I I just don't understand it, guys. I'm just gonna say it one more time. If it, mo most of these services have a 10 percent fee. That means if you have 100 patrons and they're each giving you 10 bucks, you're getting 1,000 bucks a month, you're giving $100 per month to that company. Now, that can make sense if you're not, not expecting to have a large following. But let's say you have 1,000 people giving you money. Now, you have, you know, 10 bucks per person, you're getting $10,000, you're giving $1,000 per month to these platforms. For what? For a one-time fee of a thousand bucks, a web dev can make you a, a simplified version of this. That's why I'm like, we need to make free and open source software that we can just give to people and they can get their domain, 12 bucks, they can get some server space, 50 bucks, sp spend a one-time rate. If they've got, you know, uh, uh, I guess the problem is people are like, how do I even get to the point where I have a thousand bucks unless I use someone else's infrastructure? Yeah. And I'm like, save up, uh, save up money. Do what you can because then you hire a guy for 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 a thousand bucks, and maybe you can even get it cheaper if you've got a friend or or you can learn how to do it yourself. It is it is plugins, it is WordPress, it is plugins, it is simplified. You can make it. Server space is extremely expensive. You know, there's no there's no perfect solution, which is why one hasn't been created yet. But keep you know that if someone Dude. else has your data, they're gonna sell it, and Let they me, may uh, not. But think like that. The amount of money that we would have given away timcast.com if we went with any one of these platforms i i i it's it is it, it is substantial we could have started six companies with the money we've saved easily that's what's crazy to me i know the cost of bandwidth i know the cost of development and i i look and i'm just like how come we don't have someone going to these these individuals like Michael Malice, friends, we're a huge fan of being like, hey, Michael, here's a guy, pay him one time, he'll make the site for you, and you don't have to give anyone money ever again. It's all yours. Don't give it away. I just don't understand that. I just don't get it. But you know what? Look, look, that's just me. You know, I see something and I'm, I don't understand why people are just giving things away instead of trying to, to build up something that is secure and unbannable. But hopefully, I'll put it this way before we, we'll, we'll go to Super Chats. What we're working on should should put these companies out of business, all of them. I don't care their political I ideology. I'm not not necessarily because some people won't want to buy a server space and yeah. install a package, but we're going to make it so that instead of having to worry about that thousand bucks to hire the web dev, all that work's going to be done, and you're going to just click a link and it's going to say drag and drop this into your onto your into your server file. Here's how you do it, and then boom, 
you have a subscription service website done. And here's all the other people using the service. And then you can pick who you want to see. You can whitelist and blacklist corporations. Free. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's all free. Free. 100%. And that means the only costs you will have is the credit card exchange rate, which and is server like costs, which can be insane. So the, that's that's a big part of this is server costs. Fi figuring out how to mesh network servers but it will or use always, library or have it local. It'll always be cheaper than what you'd give to a private company that's seeking to profit off of your subscriber base. Yes. And especially we, as it scales up, they do a lot of the work for you. That's what makes those but companies look nice. But that's what we're doing. We're doing the work for you. But we also do have torrent based uh, video hosting. And there are other platforms that can do extremely low cost. I mean, interestingly, Rumble is one of them to do very low cost hosting. And so th at a certain point, you don't need these services to function like this. It's 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 like WordPress plugins, man. I'm not even kidding how, how ridiculously easy it is to set up. You, 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 you get a WordPress, you download subscriber plugin, double click it and you're done. We're just simplifying it, making it as easy as possible, like one click and the thing's all set up to go. But it already is easy. That's just me, man. I don't know. Look, I, I look at the culture war. I look at some of I look at so many of these these uh, personalities who are making tons of money. And I'm like, why don't they have 10 more shows? The Young Turks have a network where they've got a dozen shows. They make money and they dish it out to all these people. Then they get investors and they dish it out to all these people. They build more shows. They do more. And I'm like, why aren't we doing that? Well, we're doing that quite literally with uh, the Tales from the Inverted World, with the vlog, with several other shows that work on a, cult a pop culture show we're working on. And then I just look at the right and the moderates and the independents and I'm like, they don't do this. They don't. Even Peter Thiel, right? He goes after a gawker. He complains about fake news. He funds Rumble. That's fantastic. But where's his effort? Joe Rogan complains about CNN lying. Joe's massively wealthy. He could take a million bucks and be like, have at it. They just don't do it. But you know what? Whatever. We'll do it. And then we'll see where everyone else ends up. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.